All right, you asked for it, so let's practice some AP Euro multiple choice questions. Now, these have stimuli attached to them. I'm not gonna read them for you. You can pause the video, read them for yourself, or you can download the full practice exam, which is linked in the description. It's published by the College Board. It's got an answer key, really helpful. All right, let's dive into the first question. Okay, now the first thing you need to do is look at the attribution. It's gonna give you a lot of information that you can't afford to go without. All right, here we see this is from the Song of the Poissard, which is to say Paris Market Women. I'm gonna underline that. From October of 1789. Now, already you should know, Women 1789, that date, should be burned on your brain because it is the French Revolution. So I'm gonna write French Revolution out here beside 1789 just so I don't forget. So the summary of the song is basically that these women march to the king's palace and get him to agree to something or they have some kind of victory over him and that's what we know. And so if you've been paying attention in your class, you should know what they're talking about, the women's march on Versailles in 1789. So let's look at the first question. The events referred to in the song led most directly, I'm gonna underline that, most directly to which of the following. When you see language like that, you know, most directly or you see like most most direct cause or something like that, what you're gonna see in the answers is all factually correct answers, but they're asking you which one is the most true. So let's start from the bottom and go up. The restoration of the Bourbon monarchy. Okay, that's post-Napoleon, so maybe, maybe. C, the installation of Napoleon as emperor of the French. Okay, now we're moving backwards in time. B, the creation of the Republican government in France. So if you look at B, C, and D in that order, you have a series of events that happen chronologically after one another. And then A, the formalization of a constitutional monarchy in France. This happened before the establishment of Republican government in France, so what you have here is a chronological series of events starting with A and going to D. So the events in the song led most directly to which of the following? It's A, the one that happens closest in time to the actual events in the stimulus. Okay, let's look at the next question. The Poissard and other participants in the events described in the song were motivated most strongly by which of the following? Let's start with B, the desire to institute free market principles in the French economy. Now that was part of France's history, but that was more of an elite intellectual movement. We're talking about average women here who marched in the Palace of Versailles. See the failure of France to gain substantial advantages from its wars with Britain. Again, that's not the concern of these women, that's more of a state matter. And then D, the fear that the Enlightenment ideas about government would undermine the basis of the monarchy. Again, this is true, but that's more of a concern of the elite thinky-thinky people, not really the average women who are marching on Versailles. What is their concern? A, an economic crisis brought about by food shortages. Now, you can get that answer right just by knowing what happened. That's probably the best way to get it, but you can also figure your way out there because these are Paris market women, it says, and their concern is gonna be more about food shortages than any of these other things. Okay, next question. The participation of women such as the Poissard led to which of the following during the early phases of the French Revolution? Now, you always need to be sure to mark up your questions because remember, when you're under pressure, you are dumber than you think, so you need to do your thinking outside of your brain and make sure you stay focused. So so here I'm gonna underline lead two, and that tells me this is a causation question. And I'm also gonna underline early phases of the French Revolution. Remember you learned that there was a liberal phase and there was a radical phase. The radical phase is when everybody's heads were getting cut off, the liberal phase was not. And so we're talking about the liberal phase here. So what the question is asking is, what did the events in the stimulus cause later? Is it A, wage equality for women? No, that's nowhere on the horizon. Is it permanent legal equality for women, but no political rights? Now that's an interesting one, because it's kind of nuanced. But do women have permanent legal equality in France? No, when Napoleon comes along, he strips a lot of that away. Or is it D, loss of rights previously held by women? The answer is no, during the liberal phase, actually women gained some rights. So the answer is C, temporary improvements in women's legal status. Again, there's a regress of those rights under Napoleon, so it's temporary, the answer is C. Okay, now the next kind of stimulus you're gonna see is a visual stimulus, and you see that right here in this map. Now I would say the most important part about the stimulus is, not surprisingly, the attribution. Look, it tells you everything you need to know. Above is a 1664 map of a 28 square mile polder, an example of farmland reclaimed from wetlands in the Netherlands during the 17th century. The square grid represents intersecting roads and drainage canals. The rectangular strips represent individual family land holdings. So I'm gonna underline two things here, 1664 and farmland reclaimed from wetlands. And the thing is, don't get confused by this map. You don't have to sit here and study it over and over again. You know everything you need to know about this map just from what you read. In fact, you could answer the following question without even looking at the image. I mean, you should look at it, but you could. Look at what it says. Infrastructure projects such as the one depicted in the map are best understood in the context of which of the following? A, the diffusion of new agricultural technology from European overseas colonies. So is agricultural technology being developed in the colonies and then coming into Europe and affecting the way things are going there? No, actually that's not the way it happens. Most of the new agricultural technology is developed in Europe itself and applied there. So the answer is not A. B, the negative impact of the re-imposition of serfdom on agricultural productivity. Ooh, that's a tempting one, but let me point out that in the attribution it says 
this is in the Netherlands. The continuation of serfdom is really going on in Russia, Eastern, and Southern Europe. So it can't be B. Let's look at D. The continued importance of hierarchy and status in rural European society. Now listen, during this time, is there a continued importance on hierarchy and status in rural European society? Yes. But don't get confused. All this map is showing you is how wetlands were reclaimed for agricultural productivity. There's precisely no indication of the importance of hierarchy and status as a result of this map. So the answer is C, the intensification of agricultural production in response to the development of a market economy. And that's why the year 1664 and the attribution is very important because that's around the time when the Netherlands was transitioning to a market economy. So let me give you four takeaways based on the work that we just did. Number one, you've got to study within the time periods that they give you for the course. It is really helpful to know who who reigned when and what historical developments are occurring in what different time periods. Because in a lot of cases, if the answer is wrong, it's wrong because it's outside the time period that they're asking you about in the question. Takeaway number two, always read the attribution. There's information in there that you cannot afford to miss. Takeaway number three, always mark up the question. You're gonna be under pressure when you're in this exam, so make sure all your thinking is done on the paper. And fourth, you can lay down some of your stress because at the end of the day, you only need about 55-ish percent to get in the realm of a passing grade. Now, of course, you still need to do well in the right in order to clinch that passing grade. And if you need help there, that's why I made these videos over here. So click on that playlist, all your dreams will come true. Heimler out.